difficulties, should use a link or dining instructions they were sent initially to return to the meeting. Members of the public are welcome to record, screenshot or tweet the public proceedings of the meeting. A copy of the Council's protocol for reporting and filming is available on the Council's, uh, sorry, Council's website. During the meeting, the members of the committee will not access the internet except that it relates to the official business of the meeting. Send or receive emails, text messages or tweets concerning the business of the committee to anyone outside the meeting. Please note that members may be accessing the agenda via the internet. We will be taking a five minute screen break every hour or so and reconvening thereafter. Now, I'd like to ask officers to introduce themselves and explain their role at this meeting. I'll begin with the planning officers. If I may start with the director, Simon. Uh, hello, yes, I'm Simon Bevan. I'm the director of planning here to give general advice on planning matters to the planning committee. Very good. Colin. Hi, I'm Colin Wilson. I'm the head of regeneration for Old Kent Rose. Uh, I'm here supporting Wing and Pip. Very good. Um, Yvonne. Uh, I'm Yvonne Lewis. I'm the strategic applications manager and I'm here in relation to the Valmar Road application to support Victoria Lewis. Thank you. Um, Vicky. Hello, uh, Vicky Lewis. I'm in strategic applications and I'm the case officer for item one on Valmar Trading Estate. Thank you. But Wing. Hi, I'm Wing Lau and I'll be presenting the case for Daisy Business Park item 6.2. And I'm, I'm a team leader for uh, in the Old Kent Road team. Very good, thank you. Uh, Martin. Uh, hi, I'm uh, the design officer um, associated with Balmar Road, so I'll be assisting with that. Thank you. Thank you, Martin McKay. Thank you. Um, Alex. Uh, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, my name is Alex Oyebade. I'm team leader transport planning, and I will be advising on the transport and highway implications of this uh, Bama industrial estate development. Very good. Uh, Pip. Thank you. Pip. Good evening. I'm Pip House, and I'm the team leader for transport policies, uh, particularly attached to the Old Kent Road, so I'll be supporting Wing today. Thank you very much. I, I'm assuming that there are no other members of, of the planning unit present. I'm now going to legal officers. Um, John. Uh, good evening, Chair. My name is John Gorst, uh, and I'll be assisting the committee in connection with legal and governance issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and can I can I ask the clerk, General, to introduce himself? Good evening, Chair, and everyone else. My uh, name is Gerald Gola. I'm the constitutional officer and clerk uh, to this committee. I'm here to minute the meeting and to advise on the procedure for hearing the items and on decision making. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. I, now, I will now begin the meeting. Um, item one is apologies. Um, I have one apologies, and that's from Councillor um, Cleo Soames. Um, she, uh, by all accounts, will not be attending this meeting, but she will be reserved by Councillor um, Darren Morell. I uh, don't believe there are other apologies here. That we've got a full house otherwise. Thank you. Um, what I'm now going to do is, go, is have some confirmation of voting members and I'll do the usual roll call. Um, now, I would ask members of the committee to confirm that they are a voting member of the committee. If I may start, begin with uh, Councillor Whittam. Can Good I confirm that I am a voting member? Very good. Uh, Councillor uh, Barry Hargrove. I'm a voting member of the committee, Chair. Very good. Uh, Councillor Adele Morris. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I am Adele Morris, a voting member. Very good. Uh, Councillor Margie Newens. I am Margie Newens and I'm a voting member. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Damon O'Brien. Uh, yes, uh, voting member, Chair. Very good. Uh, Councillor Catherine Rose. Good evening, Chair. I'm Catherine Rose and I am a voting member of the committee. Thank you. Councillor Darren Morell, reserve. Yes, I can confirm I'm a voting member. Very good. And I can also confirm that I'm also a voting member of this committee. Thank 
you very much. I now move on to item three, and this is notification of any item of business which the chair deems urgent. And now the following additional documents have been circulated before the meetings. And members, can you all confirm that you're now in possession of the addendum report relating to item 6.1 and 6.2, and also the members pack? And you can all confirm the seat. Yeah. Yes. Yes, chair. Yes, chair. Very good, very good, very good. Thank you very much. I now move on to item four, this, this disclosure of interest and dispensation. Does any member wish to declare any interest or dispensation in respect of any item or issue to be considered at this meeting? No Are chair. There... No chair. Very good, thank you very much in that case. I now move on to item five minutes. And of course, these are pages one to four of the agenda pack. Can we approve that these minutes are a correct record of the meeting held on the Monday, the 29th of June, 2020? Are these minutes agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Yes, uh, agreed. Very good. And um, I, suppose, I suppose we should really have a second uh, and we just do it by, and um, we've agreed. Can it's just for formality's sake and to, to have Gerald not to have uh, to intervene. I, I'm proposing, can someone just formally agree by, by second? Yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with the assent. Thank you very much, Chair. Very good, that's what I want to make sure. Thank you very much. This is now a legal <laughs> meeting. Very good, so the, meeting, the minutes are now formally accepted. I'll now move on to item six. And this is the, the, the development management. Now, the next item of business concerns the, the determination of planning applications. I'd like to remind everyone of the committee's guidance and conduct of business. Officers will present the report, outline their recommendations, and answer questions raised by the committee. If present wishing to speak, the following may then address the committee for no more than three minutes each. A spokesperson representing any objector to the application, and by now you need to identify either a single uh, spokesperson, and if more than one objector wishes to speak, the time will be divided accordingly within the three minute time slot. You then be followed by the applicant or their agent, again, three minutes, followed by a spokesperson representing any supporter of the application who live within 100 meters of the development site. And last but not least, a ward mm -hmm. council that represents the area affected by the proposal. Each speaker should restrict their comments to the planning aspects of the proposal and should avoid repeating information which is already in the report. The meeting is not a hearing where all participants present evidence to be examined by other participants. At the end of each representation, the committee may ask questions of the presenter. Speakers should leave the committee on subject of the welcome further questioning. Ward members in attendance and those nominated to speak on behalf of objective supported applicants may be asked to make further brief contributions in case any issue needs to be clarified after they've addressed the meeting. This is not an opportunity to take part in the debate of the committee though. After receiving all submissions, the committee will debate the application and consider the recommendation. This is a council committee meeting which is open to the public, but there should be no interruption from members of the public. Finally, I would like everyone present to know that although the planning committee comprises members of different political parties, we are not politically whipped. Our decisions are made in accordance with the council's planning policy and based on the information contained in the relevant mm -hmm. report, together with consultation responses and any verbal submissions made today. How we approach these applications set out in the development management report at item six. And if members are happy to note that report, we move to considering the, the planning application Members, are you content? Yes, Chair. Very good, thank you very much. And I'll move on to item 6.1, which is Farmore Trading Estate, Farmore Road, London, SE5, 6NW. And members, these are pages nine to 116 of the agenda pack mm -hmm. and pages one to two of the addendum report. Can the, um, uh, the, can the uh, continuing officer uh, please make your presentation? Please introduce yourself. Um, Vicky Lewis, Chair, I'll be uh, making the presentation. Very good. You may proceed. Can you see the member pack on the screen, Chair? I uh, can, yeah. Okay. Yes. 
Um, Valmar Trading Estate is located between Denmark Hill and Valmar Road. It contains eight industrial units. And whilst units three to six were occupied when this planning application was submitted, the entire site is now vacant. Units one, one A and two are in a very poor condition and have been vacant since 2012. The only vehicular access into the site is from Valmar Road and there are pedestrian accesses via a passageway on Denmark Hill and from Milkwell Yard. The surrounding land uses comprise residential units to the north and west and a mix of commercial and residential units to the south and east, which are within the Camberwell Town Centre. Um, so this is uh, Denmark Hill on the right hand side of the screen here, um, which contains uh, residential and commercial units, residential units along here within the Samuel Lewis Trust Estate. These, um, this is Valmar Road along here and this is the Milkwell Yard um, entrance. These are just some photographs of the site. So these are the buildings uh, within the application site. You can see here, um, Denmark Hill is off to the right of the image. Samuel Lewis Trust Estate and Valmar Road is here. This is the entrance into the site from Valmar Road between two residential properties. The bottom left image is the entrance into the site from Denmark Hill, um, which goes underneath um, a building. Um, and this is looking the other way uh, from within the site um, out towards Denmark Hill. Uh, this is a view from uh, Milkwell Yard. And these are some photographs of um, the existing units on the site. Um, unit 1 on the top right, Unit 1A on the bottom left, Unit 2 on the bottom right. This is the side of Unit 2 here. And these are Units 3 to 7 um, at the side. Full planning permission is sought for demolition of the existing buildings on the site and the erection of three new buildings containing almost three and a half thousand square metres of employment space, a 127 room hotel, a cafe and 43 residential units. The buildings will be set around two new routes which would connect Valmar Road, Milkwell Yard and Denmark Hill. The main block would be located in the centre of the site and would be three to seven storeys high above a, above a basement and would contain employment space, the hotel and the cafe. Um, this is the main block uh, here. Block A would be five to six storeys high and would contain employment space and residential units. And block B would be three to four storeys high and would be entirely residential. Vehicular access would be from Valmar Road with pedestrian and cyclic access from this road as well. Um, and also from Milkwell Yard and Denmark Hill and full details of the proposal are provided at paragraphs 13 to 20 of the officer report. Um, so this is the main block here um, with the employment space shown in blue, the cafe space shown in the purple, new routes through the site connecting Milkwell Yard, uh, sorry, Denmark Hill with Valmar Road and through to Milkwell Yard in this direction. And this is block A and this is block B. Uh, this is the proposed basement plan for block uh, uh, for the main block, which shows screening room, um, photography room and other ancillary facilities. This is the mezzanine block for uh, uh, the mezzanine for all for that block, which um, contains hotel rooms on this at the top part of the image and artist studios um, at the bottom. This is a um, typical floor plan, uh, one of the upper floor plans for the hotel, showing the hotel bedrooms. And this is the proposed top floor plan, um, which shows employment space and a roof terrace. This image um, shows what you would see coming into the site from Denmark Hill with the main block on the left hand side, route through looking towards Valmar Road. And on the right hand side, um, this would be block A. This view is from within the site, looking towards Milkwell Yard, which is this uh, in the distance there with the main block on the left hand side with the employment space and artist studios on the ground floor and the hotel above. And this is block B, which would be the um, residential block. These are just some typical floor plans showing the commercial space within block A and then the um, residential units um, on the upper floors of that block and some elevations um, of this block as well. And these are some floor plans for proposed block B, which would be um, entirely residential. 
um, and these are some uh, uh, these are the elevations front and rear elevations for uh, block B and this is a view um, from within the site looking towards um, well looking towards uh, looking north um, so this would be the block B on the left hand side and the main block on, on the right hand side um, so I'll just go back up to the site plan proposed site plan There have been 30 representations in support of the application, 27 objections and two comments. And following reconsultation on the scheme, a further eight supports and seven objections have been received. And these are detailed in the officer report. In brief, the representations in support relate to the provision of new housing, including affordable housing, job creation, affordable workspace, the proposal would support the town center, a lack of hotels in the area and good quality design. The objections include concerns about loss of amenity, lack of demand for a hotel and impact on other hotels, inappropriate design, the buildings would be too tall and transport impacts. And these are set out in full at paragraphs 55 to 72 of the officer report. Since the uh, report was published, um, one further objection and one further support have been submitted. And these are detailed in the addendum report together with an additional condition. The existing trading estate is not a protected employment site in the development plan. It is, however, designated as a proposal site, NSP 24, in the drafts New Southwark plan, which requires at least the same amount of employment floor space as currently exists on the site, and new links between Denmark Hill and Valmar Road. The site designation states that redevelopment of the site should provide new housing. The proposed development would provide just under 1400 square metres less employment space than currently exists on the site, but both the adopted plan under Safe Policy 1.4 and Policy P29 of the draft new Southern plan permit a loss of B-class floor space where it can be demonstrated that the site has been marketed for 24 months. Units 1, 1A and 2 have been marketed since October 20, 2014 and Unit 7 has been marketed since it became vacant in March 2018, a period of 30 months, but no tenants have been found. Given that marketing evidence has been submitted, the reduction in employment floor space is considered to have been justified in accordance with policy and a contribution towards jobs and training schemes in the borough would be provided. It's also noted that only 16 people were employed at the site when the application was submitted because the, the occupied units were predominantly used for storage. The proposed development would result in 303 jobs at the site, which is a significant positive impact of the proposal, and the additional footfall would help to support existing town centre businesses. The proposal will provide good quality employment space comprising co-working space and artist studios in the main block and maker space in block A, and the condition has been included in the draft recommendation to specifically secure the artist studios and maker space, including details of their fit out. The proposal would include 10% affordable workspace, which would be secured for a 30 year term in accordance with policy P30 in the draft Southwark plan. And during this term, the affordable rent would be capped at a 48% discount to market value, which currently equates to 12 pound per square foot. The co-working space would operate as employment space during the working week and as an extended area for the cafe during evenings and weekends for the local community and hotel guests. The ancillary facilities in the basement, including a screening room and meeting rooms and the top floor workspace and terrace would also be available to the local community outside of working hours, which would make an efficient use of the space and this would be secured through the legal agreement. Concerns have been raised by neighbouring residents that the new Southern Plan site designation doesn't list a hotel as an acceptable use that there's limited demand and that there could be impacts on other hotels and that the borough has already exceeded the London plan requirement for additional hotel bedrooms. It's recognised that the borough has exceeded the London plan requirement. Therefore, none of the new Southern plan site, site allocations include a hotel use. Instead, it's expected that hotel applications will be considered on a case by case basis. And the, uh, the, the, the new Southern plan proposes that the borough remains supportive of hotels provided other plan commitments and requirements of the site allocations can be met. Most of the hotels in the borough are concentrated um, in the northwest, 
Um, they're understood to be only two other hotels in Camberwell Town Centre, which are at least 270 metres from the site on Camberwell Church Street. The council is considering another planning application for a hotel in Camberwell Town Centre, but this hasn't yet been determined. The hotel would not result in any loss of existing residential accommodation or an overconcentration of visitor accommodation in the locality. It would help to support the town centre and it would be well located for public transport. Officers therefore considered that the hotel should be supported in this instance. The provision of housing on the site would comply with the New Southern Plan site designation and the proposal would deliver 35% affordable housing by habitable room, which equates to 14 units with a policy compliant tenure split. At 716 habitable rooms per hectare, the proposal would marginally exceed the 200 to 700 threshold set out in policy, but the residential accommodation is considered to be of a very high standard, including 98% dual aspect units, which is all but one of the units. 90.6% of the units would exceed the minimum floor space standards for units. 91% of the units would meet or exceed the BRE guidance for internal daylight levels. All of the units would have access to private amenity space and all of the units in block A, which includes all of the affordable units, would have at least 10.1 square metres of amenity space. All of the children's play space requirements will be met on the site and there will be in excess of 50 square metres of communal space within the development. Officers note that the 50 square metre per development requirement is generally applied per block, per block which would not be achieved in this instance. But officers consider nonetheless that the residential accommodation would be of a very high standard. A policy compliant mix of units and wheelchair accessible units will be provided, including 10% wheelchair accessible hotel rooms. The proposal is considered to be of a high standard of design, which would be acceptable in its height, scale and massing and will provide attractive routes through the site set within high quality new landscaping with new tree planting. In response to concerns about the height of the main block, this has been lowered and it would now only be just visible from outside the site on Denmark Hill, as shown at paragraph 138 of the officer report. Part of unit 1A is in within Camberwell Green Conservation Area, and photographs of this unit are provided at paragraph 30, 136 of the officer report. This is a single storey warehouse building with a corrugated metal roof, and officers consider that its removal would not cause any harm to the character or appearance of the conservation area. And I'll just show you another picture of that. Um, I'm going the wrong way, apologies. Um, so this is unit 1A here on the bottom left, which is in the conservation area. Concerns have been raised regarding noise and disturbance from the proposed hotel. Therefore, the legal agreement would require a hotel management plan to be submitted for approval, which would include management of the outside spaces. Conditions have been included in the draft recommendation which would limit plant noise, opening hours for the cafe, external seating and roof terrace, and servicing hours, including no servicing on Sundays or bank holidays. Overall, the daylight and sunlight impacts of the development would not be significant with a high level of compliance against the BRE guidance. The main exception to this would be at 44 to 46 Denmark Hill, which would be located close to the main block. The plans have been amended to reduce the height next to these uh, properties, although they would experience a reduction in daylight and sunlight as detailed in the officer report. These buildings are already affected by neighbouring buildings and in the case of number 46 by a fire escape scare with stair which partially obstructs a window. When weighed in the balance as all of the other aspects of the proposal, Officers don't consider that these impacts would be so significant that they would outweigh the positive impacts of the proposal, including job creation, support for the town centre and the provision of new housing, including affordable housing. Neighbouring residents have also raised concerns about transport impacts, including the adequacy of the vehicle access and an increase in the number of vehicles using Valmar Road. All servicing would take place from within the site. And all vehicles, including emergency service and res uh, refuse vehicles, will be able to enter and exit the site in a forward gear. There would be a minor increase in trip generation compared to the existing trading estate, but this would not have a noticeable adverse effect on the surrounding roads. Cycle parking would be provided in accordance with the London plan. A contribution towards a docking station in the town centre would be provided if the cycle hire scheme is extended into Camberwell within two years of the occupation of the development. A car club space and car club membership would be provided and there would be four accessible, uh, five accessible car parking spaces which would be fitted with electric vehicle charging points. 
A contribution would be secured towards the, Calvin, uh, the council's carbon offset fund and subject to conditions, the proposal would have acceptable impacts in relation to air quality, flood risks, contaminated land and archaeology. And for the reasons set out in full in the officer report, it's recommended that planning permission is granted subject to conditions and the completion of a legal agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now I can see um, members, two members have indicated they wish to speak. Are there other members who wish to speak? If can I can ask you my reference in the chat. Uh, I'll begin now with uh, Councillor Whittam, followed by Councillor Hargrove. Councillor Whittam, please go ahead. Hi, I've got two questions. Can you put the um, site plan back up? The proposed site plan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The part of the site outside block A and next to the cafe, are vehicles going to be allowed to go up that, that arm of the development? No, the, the, the vehicles would come through, uh, would, would be able to come up here. They would be able to turn here if they wanted to, um, but the, the, the vehicles turning would, would predominantly take place along here when I'm, where I'm running the cursor now. So it's not intended that they would be right, driving right up to the, um, to the hotel entrance. They would go no further than around here. So any taxis bringing customers to the, to the hotel? Um, taxis could um, uh, taxis could drop off in in this location, um, and I believe that they could also. Uh, Alec, uh, transport officer will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they could also drop off on um, Denmark Hill, and um, people could walk through um, the, the 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 passageway here to the hotel entrance. My other question is about the uh, gardens of uh, Block B. Okay. They are all less than 50 square metres, which is the recommended size for a garden. The 50 square metres is for houses um, rather than flats. Um, so there's only... Three bedrooms, aren't they? It's, uh, well, a three bed unit is, if it's a flat, a three bed unit is supposed to have at least 10 square metres. The 50 square metres is if it's houses. So there is one unit in Block B, um, which is this unit here, which is essentially a four bedroom townhouse. Um, it would have 50 square metres of garden space overall. Um, that wouldn't just be from the garden, that would be a combination of the garden and a terrace at first floor level. And what are the purple ones? The purple ones are wheelchair accessible units. Okay, and what's, how many bedrooms are they? Um, I just try and zoom in. It's very difficult to zoom. Sorry, I'll see if I can zoom in. Um, bear with me, I'll just need to look at another image. If you can just uh, give me a minute. Yeah. All of the three, all of the three bedroom units would have the required ten. Um, square meters. So are these little gardens only accessible to the flat that it's attached to? Yes, yeah, so they would have individual front doors, so you would come in here through the accommodation and then the garden at the back, but there would be a couple of um, uh, uh, communal gardens here which would be accessed through a, a communal entrance but these ones that you can see along here are all privates to the flats these are all flats the only one which is essentially a house is this one at the end so how so i can see two stairwells three stairwells yeah so this is to so, a cycle so parking the area here flats, the upper flats have got balconies they? they have they've got balconies on the front elevation um in this direction here. Okay. I, I can uh, bring up a floor plan of the upper floor. Um, I can see it on the page. Six you are. So page okay. nine. Oh, yeah. yeah, so these are the, so the gardens would be back here, the gardens we were just talking about, and the upper floor flats would have balconies on the front. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Whitton. Councillor Hargreaves. Yeah, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, you, you mentioned that there will be a legal agreement for a management plan. 
And would be included in that management plan a contact number of the hotel so that if there is any antisocial behaviour by um, um, occupants of the hotel that the local residents would be able to get in touch with them? Yes, that's something we would include in um, in the legal um, in the legal agreement. Um, the hotel would have sort of on on site um, staff twenty four seven, including security staff. Um, but we would require in the legal agreement that there has to be somebody um, potentially. We could ask that all the residents are provided with a with a contact number. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Newlands. Councillor Newlands. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to ask in relation to paragraph uh, 260, which mentions the use of a, or the construction of a combined heat and power unit um, in, the, in the basement. Um, and I wanted to ask a little bit more about that and where it was going to be situated and whether over the longer term it may be um, able to be used by, I don't know, other, other buildings or developments there. And I was also going to ask um, in the same paragraph about the um, installation of photovoltaic voltaic panels, solar panels, which um, as I understand it, there's, there, there's a, I think there's a green roof. So I just wonder where those panels were going to be. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. Uh, Vicky? Um, I'll see if I can zoom in on the, the, the basement floor plan, but um, it would be within the, um, the, the CHP would be in the basement of the, um, of the main uh, block. Um, so, zoom in. so we've got plant areas which are shown here. Um, at the moment, it's not in uh, intended that it would be um, able to serve any other neighbouring developments, but the, plant, uh, the Section 106 agreement would include um, a future proofing clause. Um, so uh, it would have to be, um, uh, they would have to fit it out with the required um, equipment so that if a district heating network um, came online um, uh, in the future, uh, uh, then the development could hook up to that. Um, so that's something that would be secured through the legal agreement. Um, there would be a mixture of um, PVs on the roof and green roofs um, uh, uh, across the development. Um, sometimes it's possible to have sort of brown roofs or biodiverse roofs which the PVs can sit on top of um, so you don't necessarily have to have one without the other they can work together. So, so Chair can I just come in very very quickly with with a uh, supplementary question sorry I um, I, yes I just, I just want yes yeah, sorry I just wanted to ask if that if you have any idea of the um the the the, the, portion, proportion, the portion of the uh, energy use of the entire development that will be supplied by the CHP and the both and, and the PV panels should be in the report. Bear with me. Sorry, I I couldn't find that. Sorry, okay. I I missed it. That's, I mean, equally, it might be something say it should be there. Different. I hope it's there. Um, and what Vicky's and other other committee members, if not, I'll, 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 after this question, I'll move on to the objectors in that case. I'll, I'll wait um, Vicky's response. Okay, bear with me. So um, we've to it if, uh, it's a paragraph 262 of the report. Um, there would be a 34.84% reduction to the use of the CHP um, air source heat pumps and PVs. We have a, re a requirement in the, um, in the core strategy uh, that 20% carbon dioxide reductions has to be achieved from um, low or local um, uh, energy sources. Um, and it would um, achieve 34.84%. Sorry, 
I, I wasn't really asking that because I, I can see that I was just I want and it might be some information that's not, not available or that maybe we can um, ask to the developer but I wondered if there is because um, that's just that's the carbon reduction I wonder if there is an indication of um, in terms of the, the the developments overall energy use what proportion of it would be supplied or is that the same thing is uh, what proportion it would be supplied by uh, by the uh, PV panels and CHP and is, I don't think that's the same thing. Okay, uh, why, why don't we okay. have that question for the applicant? And we'll Great, do sure, thank you. Question. Thanks. Oh, that's okay, Vicky. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. Very good, thank you very much indeed. If I may then, colleagues, I'm going to move on to the other representation. Uh, now, um, does anyone present wish to speak in objection to the application? And uh, I see a few names here and a quick note for the objectors. This meeting is being live streamed and a recording will be available on the Council's YouTube channel. So you may choose to turn off, switch off your camera and address the meeting with audio only. Now, when introducing yourself, please only give your first name and the block or street you live in, not the exact address. So the notes of objectives I have here, and, and uh, if um, Joe could confirm they are present, um, I've got a, a, a David Taylor, uh, Rafael yeah. Polito, and Jose Reido, I think it's pronounced. Are, all, are, all, are you all present? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, here. David, Rafael? Yeah, yes, can you hear me? I can. And yes, I'm here. Jose? Jose? Reader, uh, Gerald, um, Vicky, if you could stop sharing your screen. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Gerald, can you confirm, Mr. Mr. Uh, yes, I'm here. Sorry, it's like on the system. Excellent, 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 excellent. In that case, then, now, as you know, each um, presenter are given three minutes each. As there are three of you, I will allocate one minute per presenter. So, uh, and I've got names I've got here, David, Raphael, and Jose. Um, is, is that understood, first of all? Is that clear? Yeah. That's yes. Excellent, excellent. So um, I, shall I take it in, of, uh, I'll, I'll go by David, then Raphael and Jose last. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. That's Very fine. good. I'm going to set my clock. So, so David, um, I'll, I'll invite you now to I'll start the clock. Uh, but in fact, can I ask you, in fact, I'm, I've introduced you both, but uh, can I ask you, each of you just to confirm your name and, um, and where you live? We don't need the exact address, just name the road. If you could, each of you just introduce yourselves, first of all. So if I could be with David. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's David. I live on Balmar Road itself and I'd be directly opposite this new development. Very good, uh, Raphael? Hi, my name is Raphael, and I live on Balma Road as well. Very good, Jose? Hi, my name is Jose Raido. Um, I operate the Church Street Hotel, which is a couple of hundred meters away from the development, uh, but I live on Home Dean Avenue. Very good. Now, um, I, I understand that there are other members of the Balma Road Resident Association are here to answer questions and others are watching the live streams. And I've got note here that uh, others who may answer questions later are um, Alan Salomon, um, Nicola Klotman, um, and um, uh, Menkidus, I think you, Rieto <laughs> of the hotel, uh, Church Hotel. Is that correct? Is that correct? Can someone confirm that's correct? Those individuals are available to answer questions later on. Is that still correct? Okay, I'll, in that case, I'm going to keep moving on in that case. I'm now going to ask David if you would, um, I'm going to start my clock in a moment. Um, I'm now started now, you now make your presentation. You may start. Great, thank you. So I'm, I'm sorry not to have the video on, I just don't trust the internet and uh, want to make the points here. I, I'm a representative of the Valmar Road Residents Association, as is Raphael, and we're here to make our unanimous opposition to this development. The, the whole Residents Association is unanimously opposed to this, uh, which we think is going to make our lives uh, a misery. And um, the first point I'd make is around density. It's extremely aggressive for a site of under 6,000 feet 
uh, potential occupancy rate of an excess of 800 people. Uh, there is far too little space between the new apartments and the current gardens. There should be at least the same distance if this were to go ahead between our gardens and the current um, and, and the current industrial units as they are. That space, there's a gap between those our walls and the industrial units that should be the same for this new development, um, at least around four feet. Um, but the, one of my main, our main objections is around noise and antisocial behaviour. This is going to be a year of misery in terms of building noise when we're all stuck at home. Um, there, we already have big problems with noise and antisocial behaviour. Sorry, sorry, David, your time is up. Your time is sorry. up. Yeah, don't you worry. Um, well, we're here to answer questions, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I now move on to Bye. Raphael. You may begin your presentation now. Very good. Uh, the proposal is based on the premise that backland hotels are feasible and the design report listed five examples across London. However, this site has a unique constraint in the sense that it has only one vehicular access through Valmar Road, a narrow residential street. We have witnessed road blockage, property damage and noise of hours caused by the service vehicles going in and out of the site when only a handful of tenants occupy the site. Now we're talking about increasing that <clears throat> by, by this mixed use uh, proposal and considering that this, the hotel and workspace will be open 24 hours a day and anticipate over 20,000 guests per year, it is unrealistic to rely on a delivery and service strategy to solve the limited access to site given the demands that this mixed use uh, complex would place. Therefore, we object unanimously to the proposal. Thank you very much. Spot on, one minute, perfect. Thank you very much for that. Um, can I now move on to Jose? Um, I'll start the clock now. You may begin your presentation. Hi there, yeah. Um, my, my concerns stem uh, predominantly around the overdominance and the oversupply of visitor accommodation in the area. Uh, within a square mile radius of this uh, development, there's already 350 odd hotel rooms, uh, with myself included. We've seen for the past five years dwindling demand due to oversupply and the approvals that have been given by, by council to new developments. Uh, I can reference the Mayor's Hotel Demand Study of 2006, which indicated 2,500 rooms would be required between uh, 2007 and 2026 within Southwark. However, that target as of June uh, 2019 has already been exceeded by 2,074 bedrooms with a complete oversupply and glut of hotel rooms on the market. Um, with a further 882 rooms pending approvals, uh, which will include this Valmar uh, development. Um, I don't see where uh, the evidence is to uh, warrant uh, the uh, approval for a further 127 rooms on the market. Uh, Your, the time is up. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, if I may now move to committee members, uh, can I just check if there are committee members who wish to ask questions of the objectors? Can't see any indications in the chat room. Oh, okay, right, I see. Uh, well, I can see um, Councillor Hargrove, and I also see Councillor Morris, I believe you, did were you doing something there? Yep, that was, Councillor Morris, you also, yep, oh, that was you as well. Good. Councillor Hargrove first, followed by Councillor Morris. Councillor Hargrove, you may ask a question. Yeah, my, my question to Mr. Taylor is, was there anything further that he wanted to say? Yes, yes, thanks, Councillor, and apologies for not timing it properly, but the, I, I think if this development is to go ahead, and our view is that it shouldn't, then one thing that would, two things that would mitigate it would be a further reduction of the density, and secondly, someone on call 24 hours a day, both during the construction period, if people come out of hours, and during the development when the development is built so that if we do have a problem with antisocial behavior in the communal garden areas or in any of the flats in what is an otherwise completely silent area we're able to have someone we can call to and not have to rely on the um, overstretched uh, noise and antisocial behavior team that the council provides and you know given that we are all going to be working from home during this period uh, a reduction of the construction hours beyond the legal requirements to say have no construction on Saturday would be uh, appreciated. And yeah, I, I do think that we do think that if there was a, a ban on 
the use of the communal gardens after 9 p.m. That would also have uh, an impact. But um, I would also defer to Raphael if there's anything that he wants to raise on the um, the light um, uh, issue and privacy issue, uh, because I've mainly been talking about the uh, the antisocial behaviour aspect of this. But you know, at the moment we have complete silence at the weekend. You're talking about a very aggressive development that's going to be less than four metres. Uh, sorry, that's going to be far closer to our um, our houses than the, um, the the current development is. It's just going to create an echo chamber of, of noise, um, which is going to make our lives a misery. Thank you. Thank you for that um, clarification. Um, can I just double check before I move on to um, Councillor um, Morris? Uh, 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 Ms Taylor, you, you live in close proximity to what is an... Uh, uh, an in industrial estate. Um, did you did you move in with the estate being present, or did the estate come after you moved in? Yeah, I, so I've been there since 2012. So in that time, there has been a um, there's been. It's only recently that the, the the estate hasn't been used. During its period of use, it wasn't hasn't been a problem. I know we had that one problem with Deliveroo. But by and large, the residents have managed to have a good relationship with the people that the, the, the industrial units that have been there and any problems that we had around um, uh, bin men coming out of ours, we were able to, to resolve. And crucially, it was quiet at the weekends and in the evenings, which wouldn't be the case with this development. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can I move on to Councillor Morris, please? And then um, followed by Councillor Rose. I saw you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to ask Jose in relation to the hotels. Um, obviously, you've heard the officer say, uh, acknowledge that, that Southwark has met its, its requirement, as it were, uh, for hotel rooms, but that, that doesn't stop us from having any more and that it'd be on a case by case basis. And I wondered, obviously, the current circumstances mean that hotel occupancy would would naturally be down but I wondered if you could give us a, an illustration of whether or not your business currently uh, or, or pre-COVID was doing okay uh, whether and if you've got any particular reason why you're concerned about an additional hotel and and, and what uh, why you think that there isn't the capacity for another hotel in the area thank you Thank you for the question. Um, for the, I mean, I've been running uh, the hotel since 2007. Um, since then, you know, we, 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 we have been uh, reasonably successful up until a point of maybe 2014, uh, you know, I would say 2015, where we've reached a saturation uh, point and uh, we've sort of stagnated in the occupancy and started to see a slow decline in occupancy uh, since 2015 onwards. Um, I can I can say the same for the uh, local hotels in the area, such as uh, the Dome Hotel or the Pasha Hotel, uh, which are two uh, nearby hotels. And you know, I, I I I sincerely believe that it's it's to do with the oversupply of hotel rooms on the market. There were a number of hotels uh, built in Vauxhall, in Brixton. Uh, current planning approval for a 60-bedroom hotel in Peckham. Um, so these these hotels sadly have taken away from what was uh, a, a good demand, a reasonable demand, to now a dwindling demand. And uh, my worry is a further 127 rooms on the market, given there's already 350, not including Airbnb and the influx of um, sort of that um, that uh, competitor onto the market, would just lead to dwindling demand, oversupply, and um, at the expense of local business. Um, so yeah, and um, from from my understanding, neither the, the dome nor the pasha, um, or or myself, were consulted. Uh, you know, when this uh, when this development was was put through, and it's only by chance that I found out about this development. Um, so yeah, so that's 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 my view in terms of the current demand. Certainly now, obviously, it's everything's on the floor, but um, I think certainly it's a it's a case of um, just building more hotel rooms than what the demand can sustain. Um, if I may ask you, uh, thank you, thank you, Councillor Morris. Um, just ask you on that point, and uh, you'd have heard the. Um, I'm not sure if you read the report as regards the uh, the current position in relation to the borough and hotel uh, and the number of the hotels. We've obviously exceeded the uh, 
our agreed um, uh, uh, quota agreed with the mayor. Uh, so each application is considered on their merits. Have you submitted any evidence to indicate that your business has been declining? And of course, it has accelerated since COVID, of course, has been declining never to officers to, as evidence as to that might or may or may not have influenced their recommendation. Have you submitted any evidence at all to officers? I haven't submitted any evidence. Um, I'm certainly happy to um, to submit um, occupancy rates uh, during that period um, in which um, I've highlighted. And um, certainly I'm happy to liaise with um, any other hotels in the area to, um, to uh, display uh, the current demand that we've been experiencing as hoteliers uh, local to the, um, local to the uh, project. That, that's extremely helpful, I must say. That's extremely helpful. It, 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 it has not been a factor fully taken into account in our earlier briefings and uh, you, you make an interesting possibly quite compelling case uh, and it, be, it would be useful and we may return to you later on uh, I want to address it directly now uh, when we go back to the officers we have a further discussion around the, the current capacity um, the, the location of hotels in relation to, to this one and um, the effect your business experience in terms of the current oversupply, potential oversupply, um, but we, we, what this committee would, would require some evidence, um, which I think would be a, a reasonable reason for us to look closely at um, what you've said. But uh, if you've got the evidence ready available, if you've got it now, that'd be outstanding. If you don't have it now, um, we will return to this matter later on. So hold that thought. Um, I'm, I now wish, wish to move to Councillor Rose. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to ask the uh, resident representatives to um, explain their engagement with the proposals at earlier stages and um, the consultation process in terms of um, which, what amendments and revisions um, in the final proposal reflect their comments um, in that regard and to confirm that um, the, uh, the treatment of the rear gardens of the ground floor flats and the, um, the, the, the back walls of the, the garden um, if they knew and understood what the, that uh, boundary treatment was and that to clarify that they've never had rear access um, to their properties um, whilst the industrial estate has been in place. Um, so two questions, one about consultation and the way in which the developments have, have evolved. Yeah. And then the second one around um, the, the uh, I'll also add, ask that to the applicant so they might be able to give a more detailed answer, but, but those are the two points around that. And, I, and my assumption is that you've not had rear access at any point. Just to respond to that. The um, could I, could I, I'll hand over to Raphael, but I just want to say two quick things. We're not asking for access to the back of our properties here. What we're asking for is greater distance away from our properties. And at the moment, the point being is the further away this development is, the less the noise implications is our point, um, rather than it being right on the back of us, where it's not only more noisy, but it also has privacy issues as well. Um, and the second thing is in terms of the consultation. I mean, yeah, we have called for the a reduction in scale, but uh, we haven't seen anything that's been in line with what we want. Although, you know, they did offer to have that 24 hour point person um, during construction and once it's built. So, you know, it would be good if they would honor their word on that, but, um, but I'll hand over to Raphael. I'm gonna make a point on regarding uh, daylight. <clears throat> yes, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the, the the report is clear on, on the analysis of the of the daylight. However, it says there is more than adequate daylight at the moment and it's okay to compromise it. What's the compromise, it really affects many of the houses on Valmar Road as well as the, as a playground on, on the on the state next to the block of offices. So it it is not offering a solution to improve or maintain a situation, it's just accepting the lowest common denominator as acceptable in terms of daylight. It is. It does affect for more than just uh, number 44 and 46. It affects number from number, according to the report, from number 10 to number 38 at least are affected by, by the daylight re, uh, report. And it is, it is something that is obviously a, a big concern to all the people that have gardens in, in these houses, as, as you would understand. 
Judy noted. Um, are, are, there, are there other questions from the committee? I don't believe I've missed anyone else. Very good. In that case, then, I'm going to thank the objectors for their presentations and responses to committee members' questions. We, we may refer to you later on in the meeting just to pick up on the point of um, uh, hotel um, the usage in the area, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll take that later on in the meeting. So thank you all for your contribution. I'll now move on to uh, the applicant or applicant agent, and uh, I believe that um, we have a John Ferguson and Ravi Sharma. Is, is that correct? Hello, that's correct, yes. Um, who am I speaking with at the moment? John Ferguson here. Very good. And is uh, Mr. Sharma with you? Yes, I am. Hi. Excellent, excellent. In that case, then, what I'm going to do, and I'm sure you are aware of the procedure, uh, uh, if, it, if it's your intention that you both will speak uh, and I'll speak to time, or or who will speak on who will speak between you? We'll take the three minutes between us. So one and a half minutes each, in other words. Fair enough. Okay. Um, can I first of all, before I begin, just just for the record, John, can I just ask you just to introduce yourself and the organisations you're rep representing? Yes. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is John Ferguson of Collective Planning, representing Res Publica. Who are the applicants here, and we've also got other members of the team who are ready to answer questions as they arise. And indeed, Mr. Sharma, can I ask you also to just for the record formally introduce yourself and the organisation you you represent? Yes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ravi Sharma. I am CEO and uh, co-founder of Res Publica, the applicant. Excellent. And just to clarify, I will split the time between you both. So. John will have one and a half minute, and Ravi, you will have the remaining one and a half minutes. That's correct? Yes. Very good. In that case, then, John, you may begin now. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is John Ferguson of Collective Planning, representing my client, Res Publica, for the application before you this evening. We have worked incredibly hard over the past two years to create a high quality scheme that will generate this important vacant brownfield site in the heart of Camberwell to provide a new cultural and artistic quarter for the community. We have worked closely with stakeholders and officers, including five pre-application meetings, further post-submission meetings, as well as extensive wider public consultation. The application has full support from officers and will contribute to meeting the vision for Camberwell in the adopted and emerging Southwark Local Plan. The scheme will deliver numerous public benefits, including provision of a new landscape public access route between Valmar Road, Denmark Hill and Milk Hall Yard, delivery of over 3,400 square metres of flexible employment floor space supporting over 300 new jobs. 10% of the floor space will be affordable at rents of less than half market rent for a minimum of 30 years and provision of 43 high quality new homes of which 35% will be affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well on time. In that case, um, Ravi, you may begin. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Ravi Sharma, CEO and co-founder of Res Publica. Our mission is to create soulful and inspiring destinations that bring communities together to stay, live, create and ultimately thrive. As well as being developers, we're long-term investors and operators. That means our main focus is to deliver exceptional experiences for the people that use our buildings on a daily basis. And we're in it for the long term. We want to be an active and enduring part of this community. Our vision is to transform Valmar Road, Valmar Trading Estate, into a new creative quarter that's home to local artists, entrepreneurs, residents, and also encourages new people to experience Camberwell. The hotel will be completely unique in the way that it showcases local talent and embodies the spirit of the area. Campbell has an amazing personality that is quirky, creative, diverse, and we want to create a focal point to capture that energy, something that is inclusive and truly authentic. To realise our shared vision, we've partnered with a host of local organisations, including Campbell College of Arts, Campbell Arts, the Black British Female Arts Collective, and they've all had a hand in helping us design the scheme. We've engaged thoroughly with local residents, partly through some great on-site events, We've had 300 people attend and are proud to have received 119 letters of support. 50 local businesses have also signed a petition in support. We want to contribute in a very meaningful way to an even better Campbell World 
and the team and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much indeed. Now, what I'm going to do, if I may, before we go into questions uh, properly, um, I note that we have been active for just over an hour now. Um, I'm, and um, with, with the uh, committee's uh, indulgence, I wish to take a five minute interval uh, so that others can recover. And we'll go straight into questions after the five minute interval. Okay, and this is a sort of general um, standard that uh, we're now adopting um, that uh, durations of more than one hour should, should be followed by a five minute interval. So I'll have the five minute interval now and we will we can, uh, we will, we'll adjourn, it is now 25 to eight, we will restart at 20 to eight. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Gerald, the chair, uh, uh, the, uh, the clerk. Um, just to let you know, if you would uh, please stay in the meeting um, and mute your microphones. Those people watching um, through the live stream, um, it will cut out for about five minutes, but we'll be back online um, when we resume. <laughs>